Alright, this is successive integration by parts. So you're going to use this formula here, and we're going to be given the f of x and g of x function. So let's say f of x is equal to x squared and say g of x equals sine x. Well, first step, we need to choose our u and v prime. So we're going to do that by using an acronym called li8. And the ln is the L. This is an inverse trig. This is an algebra. This is a trig. And the E is exponential. So, look at our function. We have f of x equals x squared. Well, that is an algebra term. And sine of x, that's a trig term. How we choose u is whatever comes first in this li acronym, we're going to choose u to be that. So in this case, x squared comes first, so we're going to choose u to be x squared. And that means that v prime must be sine x. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is plug u and v into our nth order derivative table. So n is the order. And because u is not a derivative, it has order 0. So we're going to plug x squared into the order 0 slot for u. And v prime is a derivative, so it has order 1. We're going to plug sine x into v's first order slot. So now all we have to do is fill out the derivatives for u and the integrals for v. So first derivative is 2x then 2, then a derivative of any constant is 0. Now we do the integrals of sine x. That's negative cosine x, negative sine x, and then uh, cosine x again. Okay, so we got the table all filled out. Now we have to choose an n value. All right, kind of one of the hardest steps here is to choose an n value for step 3. And basically, if you have a polynomial or algebra term in here, what you're going to do is take as many steps as it takes to get to a constant. So here, this is a zero step because we're going to take the zero order derivative first, right? k equals zero. We're going to plug this in here and get zero, zero. So that's going to be the first thing we do. And the next thing we do is we're going to plug in one. So this is going to be the one step. All right. However many steps it takes to get down to a constant is what n is going to end up equaling. So in this case, n equals 1. And what we can do is plug 1 into this summation. And we can come down and evaluate this part for 1. So we're going to get negative 1. And we're going to start out at k equals 0. So negative 1 to the 0. u to the 0 order derivative. v to the negative 0 order derivative, or 0. And that's going to be plus, because it's a summation, negative 1 to the first power, and then u to the first derivative, v to the first integral, all evaluated from the bounds a to b. Alright, so now we got this the right hand side, this is an integral from a to b of u times v to the first derivative, or v prime, dx, plus negative 1 to the first power times the integral from a to b of u to the 1 plus 1 derivative times v to the negative 1 antiderivative dx. Alright, so we have a general formula. All we need to do now is plug in our known values of u and v. So u to the order 0 is x squared so what we're going to do is come down here. We want to say this is 1 times x squared. Well, v to the 0 order is going to be cosine x negative plus, well, negative 1 to the 1 is going to be negative 1. 0 to the first order. u to the first order is going to be 2x v's antiderivative is going to be negative sine x and that's going to make that positive okay so that's going to be evaluated from a to b and that's going to equal 
the integral from a to b of u v prime dx plus well negative one so that's going to make this negative integral from a to b well u second derivative that's going to be two so move that out of the integral two times integral from a to b of v's antiderivative well, that's going to be negative sine of x all right, so that's going to make that positive sine of x dx. Okay, so now we're, we're pretty much done. Um, all we need to do is evaluate this integral. It's going to be 2 times negative cosine x evaluated from a to b. And then we're going to solve for our original integral, integral from a to b of u v prime dx. And then we're going to have to move this to the left-hand side. It becomes negative. So that's going to equal negative 2 times negative cosine x evaluated from a to b minus this term here. And we can simplify and kind of clean this side up. And because these bounds are the same, we can essentially move them into each other. All right, now we have a simplified formula, and uh, this is what the integral of u v prime dx equals. All right, well now u v prime was our original integral, so that can be rewritten as x squared sine of x dx, and this is our answer.